IAS 37 deals with provisions, contingent liabilities and contingent assets. So first of all, what is a provision? This is the definition of provision. So uh, sometimes a student will be confused that uh, what is the difference between a provision uh, allowance and they might heard uh, a, mo a, a term most commonly that is provision for doubtful debts, provision for depreciation. But uh, let me clear you one thing that there is a difference between provision and allowance. Allowance is to be created against the assets. So technically this is allowance for doubtful debts, allowance for depreciation, allowance for inventory losses, but we cannot say provision for doubtful debts. It's a misnomer. Rather provision technically is a liability. So provision cannot be created against asset rather provision can be created when there is a liability. So provision is an outcome of liability. So provision is a liability of uncertain timing or amount or both. So you cannot create a provision for a certain liability having certain timing or amount. You, you always create provision when there is a liability and either the timing is uncertain or amount is uncertain. That is the uh, things that are uncertain. Now, as far as liability is concerned, liability is any obligation. So the definition of liability says that a liability is a present obligation that arises due to past event. Now that obligation, which we called uh, present obligation, that present obligation might be a legal obligation or it might be a uh, a constructive obligation. So obligation are of two types, legal obligation and constructive obligation. So that means what it means that you can create a provision when there is a liability due to legal obligation. Like you can also create provision due to a liability as a result of a constructive obligation. Now, legal obligation arises due to agreements, contract or operations of law. If you breach a contract, there is a legal obligation. If you violate an operation of law in any country, this is a legal obligation, but constructive obligation is something different. Constructive obligation arises due to past practices. word of mouth that is published statements that create an expectation on third party that company will follow that. For example, there is no such policy of uh, uh, providing refund to customer, but in the past, the company usually provide refunds. It means that there is no legal obligation to provide refund to customer, but it's a constructive obligation because past practices says that when a customer asks for refund, the company usually provide refunds. So in accounting terms, whenever there is an obligation, we have to check that whether there's a legal obligation or a constructive obligation and both obligation or both obligation will, will create a liability and for that liability will create a profit. So for liability, there must be a legal obligation or there must be a present obligation as a result of past event and settlement results in an outflow of economic resources. Now, once the definition is clear that what is a liability and what is a provision, then we have to recognize provision in the balance sheet. So what is the recognition criteria? An entity must recognize a provision if and only if. If all these three conditions are satisfied, then you will recognize provision in the balance sheet as a liability. What is the first one? It, there must be a present obligation, legal or constructive as arising as a result of past event. That is the obligating event. For example, you sell a product to a customer with an associated warranty of 12 months. So as soon as you sold a product, it's a past event and that created an obligating event. That is, if there will be any fault in the product, you have to make sure that you will 
correct that particular defect in that product so it's an obligation and payment is probable more likely than not the chances of fulfilling the obligation you have to make payment is probable when we say probable it means more than 50% chances are that that there will be a payment if such defect occurs and the amount can be reliably estimated because we are dealing with uncertainty we don't know how many of the customer will ask for the warranty then we have to estimate an amount and that estimated amount is then a provision so provision is a liability of uncertain timing and amount and for liability there must be a legal obligation there must be a or it might be a constructive obligation but for recognition of provision uh, these three points you have to cover if two points are satisfied the amount cannot be reliably estimated or the payment is not probable then you cannot create a provision what is an obligating event an obligating event is an event that creates a legal or constructive obligation and therefore results in an entity having no realistic alternative but to settle the obligation a constructive obligation arises if past practices creates a valid expectation on the part of third party for example a retail store has a long standing policy of allowing customers to return merchandise say within 30 day period so it's not an uh, legal obligation but due to past practices we have assumed that it's a obligation now as the amount is uncertain so what would be the measurement criteria so measurement of provision i is guide us about the measurement principle the amount recognized as a provision should be the best estimate although estimation is difficult but you will try to uh, create a provision as per the best estimate of expenditure required to settle the present obligation at the balance sheet date that is the amount that an entity would rationally pay to settle the obligation at the balance sheet date or to transfer it to third party sometimes an entity might create try to create uh, over estimation or under estimation and they might uh, book a liability that is over or under such such things are not allowed because you have to create a best estimate rather than a rough estimate or a worst estimate you don't to, you don't need to be optimistic or pessimistic rather create a best estimate now how we can create a best estimate so provision for one of events one of events are those events which are recurring in nature such as restructuring environmental clean up settlement of a lawsuit etc etc these are one off events one off events means such events uh, do not incur regularly it's not recurring it's one off rather and the opposite of that is provision for large population of events that are recurring in nature such as warranty customer refunds that that you are used to about that particular events so we have classified events into two types one is one off and other is recurring that is large population of events now there are criteria for those if there is a large population of events then the provision is to be estimated using the probability weighted expected value what is an expected value you have to identify the outcomes associated with this and then identify the probability of each outcome and then summation px that is outcome multiplied by probability so outcome 1 multiplied by probability outcome 2 multiplied by probability and sum of those uh, outcome and probability is expected value so we'll create provision on the basis of expected value rather than a single value in case of a large population of events 
but if the event is of one off nature then large population then probability cannot be assigned and in that case the provision is to be measured at the most likely event the most likely event might be in terms of amount or in terms of percentage so probability cannot be assigned and you have to rely on a single figure that might be a most likely amount in in terms of amount or percentage whenever you are creating a provision and uh, you have to pay that provision in future then the measurement should be based on discounted present value using a pretext tax discount rate that reflects the current market assessment of the time value of money and risk specific to the liability so whenever you are trying to create a present value you need to find out a cost of capital and that cost of capital reflect the risk profile associated with that amount now what would be the entry of provision if you have created an amount then what how to record that how to book that so what is the entry of provision when a provision is recognized a debit entry for provision is not always an expense we usually create provision entry as expense debit and provision or liability credit but sometimes the provision may form part of the cost of asset means the debit element of the provision is to be capitalized in the cost of asset such as in ias 16 when we purchase an asset and you have to dismantle that at the end of its useful life then you have to estimate the dismantling cost and you have to add that cost in the assets capitalization process so there might be two entries expense debit liability credit or sometimes asset debit or liability credit use of provision entity cannot uh, uh, use one provision and offset with another provision should only be used for the purpose for which they were originally recognized for example a provision for restructuring has been created and now the liabilities has been settled and there is no need for that provision now you cannot offset it with another provision so if there is no need you have to cancel that provision you have to eliminate that provision so at each balance sheet date you have to review your balance sheet estimation of the provision at your balance sheet date and adjust to reflect the current best estimate as a result if you have created a provision at the start of the year and you have brought forward value of provision that is 1000 so at the end review it again if the value requires it to be 1200 then it's increase in provision and you have to book provision by 200 and that is expense debit and liability credit and there might be a situation where there will be a decrease in provision so increase in provision is an expense it will result in expense while decrease in provision is to be recognized as an income if there is a provision in the balance sheet date and if it is no longer probable that an outflow of resource will be required to settle the obligation what to do the provision should be reversed so provision debit and profit and loss account or income credit and if you settle in provision then again provision debit and cash or bank as credit so in this way you can uh, eliminate a provision if there is no need and you can reestimate a provision at the end of balance sheet date